Okay, quick easy video coming at you today. We're gonna show you a piece of software that's free, very useful, and you absolutely should have it. Phil's been using it for years. I just started using it. I don't know why I've waited so long. I know why, because I'm th I'm stubborn as fuck. Wow. Just roll the ad. <laughs> For those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. Now that I've recovered from my aneurysm, let's go ahead and talk about aneurysm. this. My aneurysm. Uh, this is Winero Tweaker. So you may have heard of this, you may not have. Basically, this is gonna turn all the dip switches in window, uh, windows. <laughs> Basically, this is gonna be a GUI that allows you to turn on and off all the features in Windows that are often not like visible to you. I'm personally using this on my test bench and my uh, XOC benchmarking rig to turn off things like Windows Defender, turn off updates, turn off all background tasks and background apps and stuff. So I'm doing this to provide as much CPU overhead availability to my GPU and benchmark uh, without any of that background stuff kind of impacting my score a little bit. So Win Arrow Tweaker is free. Um, I'm not even gonna put a link to it down below. It's kind of like rule number one of whether or not you're capable of using the software is if you can open up your search engine and type Win Arrow Tweaker, that's the first step. If you can do that on your own, we're good. If you can't and you're like, why didn't you put a link down below? You're not ready. You're just not ready to go in here and start messing with stuff, okay? So consider it a litmus test at this point. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about prep. You wanna make sure that you know how to undo any of the changes because you can actually cause some changes in here that might have an adverse effect in your Windows environment depending on what you're doing. So if you go over here to actions, the first one that you wanna know is reset all tweaks. So basically that means any of the stuff that you've changed from uh, you know, where the default settings are, we'll put them back. The other thing is once you get it kind of set up how you want, and if Windows goes in and does an update and kind of undoes some of your settings, you can quickly export tweaks once you're done, you'll have an export file, and then you can import those tweaks back in later if you want to, uh, you know, if anything got changed, you can just load your tweaks back in. So how to reset is very important, and then how to import your tweaks uh, once you've kind of got it all set up as you want. So if we take a look here, it's all broken down into categories. So we've got home, bookmarks, Windows 11 appearance, advanced appearance settings, uh, behavior, boot and log on, desktop and taskbar, Microsoft Edge, I like how it gets its own category, <laughs> settings and control panel, file explorer, networking, user accounts, Windows Defender, Windows apps, power and battery, privacy, shortcuts, tools, and get classic apps. So let's go ahead and start towards the top right here. I'm not gonna go through each one of these, obviously. I'm gonna go through the major ones that people might be most interested in, but this just gives you an option uh, and a description box here that tells you what that option does. Now, certain ones that you change, see this one here, I, I toggled it. It says a restart of Explorer is uh, required. Now, it might say restart Explorer. It might say restart Windows, depending on the change that you're making. Uh, I always say I'll do it myself later because that way you can do it all at once at the end. Now. Anything that pops up right there won't take effect until you do the action that's saying has to be done first. So I'm gonna uncheck that just because I don't care about the full context stuff. I'm gonna disable Copilot and I'm gonna disable the Copilot taskbar. And you can just ignore this. You can move on to the next one. Just remember, you should do a full system restart after you change any of these. Ads and unwanted apps. I love how it's just disable ads in Windows. You can uncheck and check it again and undo everything. Um, I'll do it myself later. This is all of that built-in, we want you to buy shit that Windows puts in there because we all know now that Windows is nothing but a mining tool for getting your data to direct uh, target ad, you, advertise to you to make you spend money. That's all Windows is now. So right here, disable driver updates is kind of a big one here. If you are if you wanna take full control over your drivers and you uninstall a driver, oftentimes if you uninstall a driver and your Windows is connected to the internet, when you restart Windows after you restart the system after removing the driver, Windows will automatically start to install a driver again. We're just gonna randomly pick one based on what it thinks is the best driver for the case, which is more often than not, very old versions of the drivers. So by disabling that means that we're gonna make it so that we have to manually install drivers for ourselves. And that's kind of the best thing to do uh, so you don't get driver overlap and other driver conflicts with each other. 
uh, when you install a new version on top of an old one without having to do a clean install. Disable Windows Update. So the default behavior for updates is to check automatically uh, and you can postpone that out to I believe five or six weeks. Now, if you enable this button, uh, basically it's not gonna allow you to be able to even manually go and search for updates. So it's recommended that if you're gonna do this, you would have to go in here and disable that, restart your system, then you can check for updates and then re-enable it. Uh, especially, this is very important for like our test bench and whatnot when we're doing our GPU benchmarking and stuff for uh, review purposes, we need to keep the versioning as solid and as consistent as possible. And if Windows is going and doing accumulated updates and stuff on its own, now we don't know if any of the variances in run to run that we may have seen would be related to a version change on Windows or, or whatnot. So that's why we use this to basically turn off updates entirely until we are ready to push them ourselves. Okay, so the Microsoft Edge tab, you can tell that this one really annoyed the developer because it's called Disable Annoyances and Bloat. So if you click that, this is all the stuff that's bloated into Edge. Disable all that stuff. So like disable follow creators, disable sidebar, disable smart screen, disable sync, disable restore pages, disable shopping, disable rewards, disable mini context menus, disable in implicit sign in with Microsoft account. That one's super annoying. Have you ever had Microsoft Edge tell you, hey, do you wanna make Edge your default browser and sign in and we can link all your stuff together? No. Okay, you sure you don't really wanna do that? Yeah, I'm sure I don't, I don't wanna do that. Okay, you're saying you don't wanna do that, but we wanna make sure you're really sure you don't wanna do that. I don't wanna do that. Okay, we'll go ahead and ask you again in a while. You can turn that off permanently. It's also probably a good practice to just go ahead and enable all these checkboxes in Edge, even if you're not using it. Okay, so user accounts, disable UAC. This is anytime you launch a program and it brings up a little prompt that's like, da -dung, are you sure you want to launch this prompt? And it, that was a safety mechanism to keep automatic running scripts and programs uh, that were malicious from auto executing on your system. So it couldn't just do it on its own in the background. If you disable this, that stuff can happen. So it's like a nice to not have the annoyance of every time you click on something, having to confirm, yes, I want to run that. But like, just like permanently disabling Windows Defender, which I'm gonna show you how to do on here as well, which we don't recommend you do if you're connected to the internet and doing anything important on your system. Uh, for benchmarking and stuff, we disable all that stuff. But now just know if you turn off the UAC stuff, you do have the, you are exposed now to stuff being able to auto run without it verifying uh, or you having to say, yes, I want you to run that. So just keep that in mind. I'm leaving it enabled on here because this is a system we're using for other things. Okay, so Windows Defender, like I said, disabling that puts you at risk. But if you also are annoyed by Windows Defender or you're using it for benchmarking purposes or whatever, you're using your system for benchmarking, it's a pretty big hit to your overall scores and stuff. So you have to turn off uh, tamper protection by opening this. Yeah. And then tamper protection. So we have to turn this off. Now we can disable Windows Defender. Okay, so we're gonna show you on my test bench now for the like the XOC stuff I'm doing, what it looks like. Uh, the other one we're kind of leaving alone. We're trying not to tweak it too much because of the fact that is what we're using for our Linux AB testing stuff. So rather than like revert all those settings back, we just went ahead and I'm gonna show you now what it looks like over here. So as you can see, the WinArrow tweaker is running on this machine. It doesn't even have to be running. This, you could make all the changes and uninstall it if you wanted, technically, but all of the stuff looks exactly the same. So let's talk about Defender here. So you can see it's got the little yellow exclamation point, right? Saying there's actions that are recommended because if you click it, if you click on here, you can see it's off and I can't change any of the settings. It says it's managed by the administrator, which is exactly what I said was gonna happen. So if I wanna turn that back on, I have to do it inside of WinArrow Tweaker. Um, and if I uninstall WinArrow Tweaker and then reinstall it, it's gonna show the settings exactly as Windows has them enabled. So it's not like Win WinArrow Tweaker is the control mechanism, it's just flipping the switch and then Windows leaves the switch and when you reinstall WinArrow Tweaker, it just scans what all those switches are and shows you where they're at. So it's not like, oh, I uninstalled it, now I lost all the stock stuff. Anyway, moving back to uh, uh, updates now. If we go to updates, something went wrong. Try to reopen settings later. <laughs> I love how Windows is like, I don't know, try later. <laughs> That's because we disabled you. But now if I want to do updates, I'm gonna have to go into WinArrow Tweaker. Go back to updates. And if I don't wanna scroll through the menu, I can just type updates in the search bar. Uh, behavior, That's driver updates, Windows Edge, wait. Update, where is it? Oh yeah, Windows updates. Double click that, uncheck it. Notice how it's not telling me to do a restart? Now check this out. If I go, just close that. Boom. So that one doesn't actually require a restart, but 
Anyway, you can see there were some updates on here that actually kind of failed for whatever reason. I'll figure that out later. But anyway, that is Wind Arrow Tweaker. So it can do more than, th than just this, but I figured right now this is a, a quick way to help you guys get through some of the annoyances. And if anything, the big ones, just turn off all the targeted ads. If you do it for no reason other than that, it's gonna be uh, a much better Windows experience by just disabling all of the spyware stuff. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this quick video about this software has helped you. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.